Once upon a time in modern, the landscape was dominated by Birthing Pod. Birthing Pod was a car that people remember fondly. They don't forget how kind of busted it was. Birthing Pod would allow you to just pump up and bump up creatures into a combo. So you'd go from a 2-drop to a 3-drop to a 4-drop to a 5-drop and kill people. Those chains would often involve untapping the pod with a Deceiver Exarch and then making infinite creatures with, I don't know, a Kiki Cheeky and a Restoration Angel, for example. It got banned a little while back in the interest of competitive diversity. Come to Calderheim and we have a kind of pod. We have Pyre of Heroes. Honestly, one of my favourite cards in the set. It fixes pod in many ways. It doesn't pretend that it's a four mana, two mana activation like pod did. Um, it's actually just two mana and two mana activation. But the essential thing, the essential difference between Pyre of Heroes and Birthing Pod is that Pyre of Heroes says that you can sacrifice a creature and search a library for a creature costing one mana more in the same creature type. So of course, the, the best place to take this is to the established tribes. You've got goblins, elves, merfolk, elementals. We're going to humans. Humans are one of those tribes that have done very well in modern. And we're going to play a deck submitted by a patron today. That patron is Staxi Boy. Staxi Boy is quite a long time supporter of the channel now and is part of my splicer tier on Patreon. Splicers, uh, one of the higher tiers, allows you to uh, submit decks to me and on occasion pick from them and play them. And this deck did strike a chord with me and look pretty fucking cool. This deck was submitted by Staxi Boy. A boy so Staxi, he once locked his mother under a Trenosphere for three weeks. A boy so Staxi, he consumes winter orbs for sustenance. A boy so Staxi, he plans to call his firstborn child chalice of the void on one on screen now will be staxi boys version of the deck super aggressive playing four lightning bolts wild cantors herbalists and all sorts of stuff to be a super aggressive pyre of heroes deck that utilizes burning tree emissary and stuff to shit out your hand and gain a uh, uh, value in an aggressive way that will hopefully punish your opponent i played a couple of games and then i found that wild cantor and herbalist weren't pulling their weight so what i did was i moved across to well a slightly different variant i've splashed into naya to give us access to one of the best payoffs for playing humans, which is Thalia's Lieutenant. Thalia's Lieutenant is so good that my dog in the corridor right now is getting excited about it. It also allowed us to play Thalia Guiding Your Throne in the sideboard. So the white gives access not only to pretty much one of the best pumps, creatures, and payoffs for humans, but also one of the best disruptive hate bear uh, DNT pieces from humans. We have Noble Hierarchs as a mana dork. We have Mayor of Aberbrook and the Thalia's Lieutenant as our um, lords, as it were. And then we have things that allow us to progress our board state quickly. Burning Tree Emissary, Priest of Erobras, both of which when they come down, give us the mana to activate our Pyre of Heroes and then jump them into three and four drops respectively. Our deck is a Magus of the Moon deck so we can lock people out underneath Blood Moon. And then we have Tireless Tracker, which originally Staxi wasn't playing and I found the deck would run out of steam sometimes. And Tireless Tracker does help to mitigate that issue. Our Silver Bullets are, well, Eternal Witnesses to get back things we need from the graveyard and grind people out. Kessig Malcontents to finish a game when we've got three, four, or five humans in play by doming our opponent or killing our Planeswalker. Yes, Sova Dragon Claw to be able to steal an enemy Tarmogoyf and hit them with it. And then we've got our two four-drop slots, Pia and Kirin Nalar, and Huntmaster of the Fells. These are just, again, value engines. This deck is very much, although it's an aggressive deck, it is very value orientated. So we are going to shit out our hand. Through the use of Power of Heroes and a card I'm going to come to the moment, Collected Company, we can outvalue our opponents too. We can grind against mid-range decks. And coming to it, this is a Coco deck. Originally, Staxi wasn't playing Collected Company in the deck, but honestly, the amount of value that Collected Company generates when you hit things like Eternal Witnesses or, or, or pump spells like Mayor of Averbrook and Thalia's Lieutenant is fucking wild. I think the cyborg could do with some work. Spoilers, I'm recording this intro after I've played a load of games with it. But um, yeah, I think it's got some tools to fight things, you know, in the metagame right now. Dragon's Claws for the, the Blitz decks, for example. Some removal uh, for, for the decks where we need to take out creatures, uh, whether it's big mana dorks or utility creatures. And then obviously we've got Thalia. Avalanche Riders allows us to blow up uh, some utility lands like Colonnades, for example. And then we've got Crypts and Ancient Grudges, which is obvious what they're for. It's Graveyard based decks or artifact based decks and that's the deck my friends that is staxi boys burning tree pyre pod like i said if you want to get involved with the discord where we have a gladiator league at the moment and a warmer 40k league and like i said a certain tier spicy tier and upwards i take deck lists from people and have calls with them each week you can check out the link to the patreon in the description below don't forget this video is also brought to you by the support of channelfireball.com and ultra pro and with all that out of the way let's play some fucking modern it is round one 
We've won the die roll. What have we got here then? Pyro of Heroes, Starless Attendant, Collected Company, and some lands. Play the Furhose early so I can go and crack it for a tapped shock land in our opponent's end step. They're going to play a Hedron Crab, meaning they're some form of mill. We want to be able to threaten them, so I'm going to lead with Thalia's Lieutenant so that we can, you know, change some creatures and get a little bit of aggro on the go. A second Hedron Crab. Is this a fetch land? Is this a fetch land? Please don't. Okay, not a fetch land, a field of ruin, which will fuck our manor up, no doubt. That said, we are playing one planes, two forests, two mountains, so we can't actually go and get either of the lands we need to get. But field of ruin will mill us for six here. And on the upside, we can actually pod our Thalia's Lieutenant into Eternal Witness to get the collected company that they've just milled into our bin back. So being an Eternal Witness deck is good for us. We drew a Noble Hierarch. I'm going to crack this fetch. I'm going to make a Noble Hierarch, which will grow our Thalia's Lieutenant and give it a steroid on the attack this turn. So we can attack for three. And I'm going to play a Pyre of Heroes. We get in for three. No block arenas, I would assume, which will turn into 17. Means we're kind of on par in the race. They've milled our standard 43 cards in library. We put them to 17 life. It's weird. It's really weird understanding how well you are, where you are in the race versus a mill deck. They're returning the Aboro to their hand, meaning they must be missing a land drop. Two more companies into the bin, a Megas of the Moon into the bin, a Ruin Crab from our opponent. I'm very tempted just to, to pot into a Megas of the Moon to shut off their mana, honestly. Would you appear in Kirin Nalar, which isn't ideal, uh, as we don't, well, we can cast it. I don't think I'm going to be potting into it. It's actually drawing it's reasonable. I'm just going to cast Company now in case we hit a Burning Tree Emissary, which we can pot into Magus or hit a Magus. I mean, we can guarantee a Magus hit here, but this is going to get us more damage through. So we Coco and we hit Burning Tree, Burning Tree, Noble, and Tireless Tracker. I'm going to put Tracker and Burning Tree into play. Burning Tree will trigger. Lieutenant will trigger a couple of times. We're going to crack the Burning Tree Emissary into a Magus of the Moon. Just going to turn our opponent's lands into mountains. Now they can still mill us. They've got triple crab. Um, but we can start peeing and Kirin alarming their crabs away eventually. Uh, we're going to get into combat now and just attack for six on the ground. It's quite a lot of damage. I assume they'll keep their crabs around, because that might be their primary wing con. They've missed the land drop, and they only have two mountains in play. So casting spells is going to be fucking difficult. Daka, daka, daka. They shoot us for nine mil. That's a lot of mil, actually. They use never Never Cast Miss Miracle, which is legit. That's going to mill us more. At this point, it might just be worth only attacking with our creatures, just hoping they don't draw any more lands. Mesmeric Orb mills us for each permanent that untaps, which with our lands is a lot. We go down to... 20 cards in library. I think less than 20. Sub 20. 17. I don't think I'll be casting anything this turn uh, because of the, using our 4 mana means we mill 4 more next turn. 1 land is 9. 9 plus 4 plus the 3 from attacking. That's 7 plus 9. Quick maths. That's around 20. We move to combat and we do the slams. The slammer jams. I'm representing, well, 1 point shy of lethal here. They're going to have to start blocking at some point. They block the 2. I really like it if they didn't hit a land here. Don't cast a second orb. Oh, fuck me. Okay, we're going to mill 6 here. Jesus wept. Mill, 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 mill. We're down to 9 cards in life. We're going to play the horizon canopy, which gets us a clue. We're going to go to combat and attack. They're on threes. They've got to block both the Thalys and the Tireless Tracker here. Okay, so if they hit a land drop, we die. If they play... Fuck. What? No fucking way. Oh, fuck. Okay. Good start. Good start. I'll, I'll show you all how it goes. I won't scoop. I'll let opponent have this sweet satisfaction of just drawing three mesmeric orbs in a row versus the Megas of the Moon. That's pretty unlucky for us. We untap... Three permanents. We mill nine cards down to zero in library. Fuck me. We keep a hand with a noble hierarch. We're going to play a cavern of souls naming human. And we're going to play the noble. Ruin crab from our opponent. We play a mayor of Adelbrook. And we're going to go in for two. They can block here. But let's see if they see the line. Let's see if they see the line. Did they? They did. Well, fuck. A hedron crab from our opponent. They play a polluted delta. They get to mill us for six. I'm going to be potting Maya into a Magus of the Moon. And hopefully this time around they won't draw all of the fucking orbs they can. Although we've, we've started into Ancient Grudge. So we've got a flashback then that can get them. They're also fetching basics because, uh, well, we kind of showed our hand, right? The good thing about Magus, even if they have access to Black Mana, is that Magus, well, A, it dies to Fatal Push, which is probably what's going to happen here. But B, it turns off their fetch lands if they don't have the removal spell. We drew an Eternal Witness, which is pretty good here. We're going to play a Pyre. We're going to crack our Vista for a forest so we can cast green spells through our Magus, even if the Noble Hierarch were to die. Now, nothing on their side has died, so they can't push now, because it only kill a 1-drop or a 2-drop. They have a basic island anyway, so life is 
quite literally very difficult, but it doesn't matter. I mean, we've, we've still turned off our fetch land, so makes it still a thing. We're going to eternal witness to get a collected company back. We're then going to sacrifice the witness, get a hunt master. Then we're going to go to combat. Now, attacking would allow them to block and then push the Magus or the Huntmaster. Oh, they've just got, oh, they've got Visions of Beyond. They're just going to draw some cards, sure. But either way, we need to start getting aggressive. Red, black, what the hell is this? Eliminate my Magus. Okay, let's try my Magus. Rune and Crab, number three. Fetch land would be awful. Rune of, Field of Rune is basically a fetch land here. So they're going to mail six and then another six, which puts us to 13 cards in library. Jesus Christ on a fucking bicycle. We're playing Horizon Canopy. We're going to sacrifice the Noble Hierarch. Grab a Mayor of Averbrook if there's one left in the deck. There should be. We get them for three. Cool. And then we pass the turn and we'll flip our werewolves. And then uh, hopefully we can kill them on the following turn. If they have an archive trap here, we are just fucked. They also could have Fatal Push here too. That's to our opponent. We've got seven cards left in our library. Both Mayor and Huntmaster flip. Huntmaster flipping means I get to shoot and kill a Hedron Crap, which is nice. The Mayor also flips, which makes him bigger and he pumps both our Ravager and our Wolf. Target player mills 10. Well, I guess we'll just fucking die then. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna cast the company and they have a drown the lock anyway, so um We were not even close <coughs> A true reflection on what it is to be me life is so hard I've got no fucking green mana, so I'm gonna mulligan. This is a one lander with a hierarch What could possibly go wrong here? I have lost game fat caster mage enough in my time to know this is not gonna be an easy game. We could like Pyre of Heroes our burning tree next turn into a three drop, like into an Ewit to get the burning tree back and be like, whoa, watch out, fatal push. Fuck me. Okay, don't worry about it. We're gonna draw another land. We're gonna draw another land. It's all right. We did draw another land. I'm so good at this game. Put that mana, mana, mana. Let's go burning tree emissary. With that mana, I shall summon a mayor of the Averbrook. It's not of the Averbrook, it's of Averbrook. I like the fact that his dog looks generally quite a nice little dog in the first art. And in the right hand art, his dog has just gone wild. Why is his dog so... Oh, that's him. Third land is a white blue land. Not what I was expecting. You don't see Mystic Gate very often. We have a 3-3 three, three now. Watch out, watch out, watch out. We have another land. Let's go, let's go, let's go. In for five. If we go see Snappy Fatal Push, we are... Ugh. Fuck. It's kind of... To be honest, it's obvious that that was going to happen. It's very clearly obvious that that is a line they can take, but it's still not, I'm not happy about it. Should I have just played the Pyre and passed? They would have still killed the Halpak Alpha. We're going to play a Priest of Urobrask, which will then summon another Priest of Urobrask. It's kind of like Squadron Hawk, but not. Then we'll play a Pyre of Heroes with the other mana. Don't wrath me, bruh. Don't fucking do it. Okay, so all good. That's not a wrath. That's an incredibly overhyped Planeswalker. Do you remember when this was going to break modern? Do you remember? Priest of Urobrask remembers. Priest of Urobrask was in standard with this bastard, I think. I drew the Huntmaster that I was going to jump into, so that's kind of irritating. We'll kill Jace, sack a Priest, grab a P and Kirin, make some one once. Loving life over here. We've got a Huntmaster to rebuild post Wrath as well uh, once we find a fourth land. And if they have a Wrath, they're going to five mana now. Is this going to be big old Fat Teferi, as I like to call him? The chunkier one? The fu There he is. His mana cost is a lot chunkier than the lean, mean Teferi machine. He's on five. They're going to untap some lands. We can attack him to kill him here. We have no more jumps with our Pyre. Our pod chains haven't been the best. Okay, this is pretty strong. Let's go Thalia's Lieutenant. Do they counter this? Okay, I think I'm okay with that. Attack Teferi, Teferi, Teferi. And you, my pretty, can slap Fat Caster Mage in the face. So we kill Teferi and take him to 17. I'm still absolutely terrified of a Wrath here. What? How is that game even remotely over? <laughs> What is going on? They're on 17, we're on 16, and we only have five power in play. I guess they're scared of the power of Pyre, but little do they know it wasn't doing anything on the current board set. Our next draw was a pretty reasonable magic card. Okay, let's go to game two. We're going to keep this. This hand is actually very slow. But if we draw some one and two drops as we go, we'll be loving life. They've shocked a water grave in. Is it a fatal push? Who knows? Drowned catacombs from our opponent. They now have two land. That means they can leak us. I'm still probably going to just fire spells into their man. Oh, we can play Cavern of Souls. There's... We have to worry about leak. 
There's a long pause here on the wooden foothills. If they cast Shadow of Doubt here, that'd be pretty funny. I'd probably have scooped on the spot out of respect. This now demands that they play a spell next turn as well, otherwise we start to generate value out of this. That is a counter spell that doesn't give a fuck about Cavern of Souls. That is interesting. Let's put that on top then. Floods a strand from our opponent. I'm scared our pyre's gonna get leaked if we can't, like, you know, cast other things into the leak. I'm gonna play a mountain and then I'm just gonna play a mayor again. There's no reason on giving information. The mayor resolving is pretty good. A snapcaster opt here. Nothing from our opponent. We flip our mayor of Aberbrook here. We're gonna go to combat and attack. They could snappy Aether Gust our Howl Pack Alpha, I guess. And get in for three basically there we go and then i'm gonna go green red red tireless tracker now bearing in mind i could have gone priest of arabrusk into pyro of heroes i believe pyro of heroes would have countered with the priest obviously couldn't kill cavern souls and then the two spells would have then flipped our the our, our howl pack alpha back again which i don't want to do either so i think playing a tireless tracker pressuring them a little bit to wrath because uh, we have three bodies on the board now thanks to the howl pack alpha Snapcast a mage, okay. They're gonna Aether Gust something. I'm surprised they didn't Aether Gust the Tireless Tracker when it's on the stack, honestly. They're gonna put the Alpha back on top of our library. I'm okay with that, honestly. We still get the Wolf out of it. So there was some mistiming there. They could have got our track on the stack, not letting us get a clue. They could have done that to the Wolfpack um, Alpha during main phase. Basically, that was a, a bit of a pun. Hero of Dominaria coming down. They're gonna tick up, okay. They're gonna Aether Gust my Tracker. I'll put that on top, yeah, sure. If we shuffle with the Pyre, we actually lose the tracker. But I think that's okay. We sacrifice the priest of Urabrask. Now, we can get we can blow up a land, we can get a Huntmaster, or we can get a Peer and Kirin and Alar. I think Peer and Kirin is the best shot here. Although I guess Huntmaster is also pretty good. Yeah, we're gonna get Huntmaster. We gain two life, we make a wolf. We go to combat and we attack the Teferi with a wolf. They're going to bounce the Huntmaster back to our hand and draw a card. They untap two lands. We draw a Cavern of Souls. We're going to play it on a human. That's a pretty good draw here. We're going to attack Teferi to get rid of this Snapcaster Mage. We're going to play a Huntmaster of the Fells, which makes us a Wolf and gains us two life. We're going to push the Huntmaster, which is fine. We're going to hope for no Mana Leak here as we cast our Pyre. Oh, fuck. Should have played around it. Should have played around it. Fuck! Okay. The second pyre would have been sweet because then next turn what we could have done was jump the Averbrook into a Eternal Witness, then Eternal Witness back the Pyre of Urobrask, and then the Priest of Urobrask, and use the other pyre on that Priest of Urobrask to go get Pia. We would have been just loving life, but I kind of shouldn't have done that. That was that was stupid. I could have played an uncountable mayor, which would have opened us up to our wrath, but it would have uh, not lost a pretty valid card to a mana leak. And it also maybe one of the cards in the hand live, right? The hand is probably full of cannon that they can't do anything with. Teferi is fast approaching an ultimate, so we've really just stop it. I'm assuming there's gonna be another snapcaster in our future. Um, they untap two lands, they got all this mana. And we'll have to go get malcontents just to ping it down, which is a, a tragic place to be. We're gonna Espica Charm for us to discard two cards. I'm gonna crack a clue and then gonna sacrifice this horizon canopy to also draw a card so we get maximum information on what we discard and then i'm just gonna discard stomping ground and the other pyre i guess and then we'll play a mayor of Averbrook. actually no we won't we'll attack first and then we're gonna go green green play a mayor they might just play another planeswalker a jace or a baby to fairy perhaps or they just have the push for the mayor okay they play a land they have two cards in hand we have the one they get to untap some lands here hope for the esper charmas in draw step again that'd be pretty brutal make a burning tree make two mana we're then gonna sack the burning tree with that mana i'm tempted to magus them no if we make them in we have no green mana left that's bad eternal witness then yeah eternal witness getting back hub master of the fells they have two cards in hand one of which could be a snappy they could snappy push here no we take this ferry down to four. Oh, i see why they scooped earlier now because their control they needed the time on the clock right baby to fairy can just bounce our wolf and get them a card out of that yeah seems reasonable jace okay no bouncing of the eternal witness at least fucking hell they're drawing so many cards now because of these planeswalkers we untap and we find a noble hierarch which is a thing that we can pod into stuff i guess if we pod it into a mayor we can kill the jace the mind sculptor they had a cryptic tap down gain control of target creature nice Okay, we're going to attack the Teferi anyway here. What a slog. We killed the baby Teferi. Play a Huntmaster. Okay, we have three bodies on board. 
I am still terrified of a wrath. I'm gonna push my hunt master, okay. I guess in firing our pyre into a mana leak earlier, it means that if we draw a company, it's more likely to resolve. Because they're gonna be shuffling their counter magic away because of these cavern of souls where if and where they can. There is an argument I could be going face with a lot of my attacks, but Teferi would have ultimated by now if I didn't, so. Draw two cards, up to four cards in hand, thanks to Archmage Charm. Okay, didn't draw a land, but we did draw Archmage Charm. They're gonna Esper Charm us here. Which is a shame, because we were gonna get to die for Daredevil into their Esper Charms and stuff. This is rough, this is really rough. Okay, we're gonna sack it Ewit to get Peer and Kirin Nalar. Make some 1-1s. One no attacks from us. I guess trading the wolf for the snapcaster wouldn't be so bad. So then at least Ping and Kieran the Lark can attack next turn. Teferi goes up. We have five cards in hand now. Jace brainstorms, transforming some of those cards into absolute gas. We're, we're at the stage now, especially Delta plus Jace brainstorm, where we're pretty fucked. There's the wrath finally. Um, let's shoot them for one, for two. They've probably been holding on to that wrath for a little while, either floating on top of their deck or had it in hand. And only felt like utilizing it when we had like enough bodies for it to be a threat. They're on 10, they have a Teferi on 7, 4 cards in hand, all their mana. We drew a Magus of the Moon, which is not going to be good enough because they could bounce it. We could change this into an Avalanche Rider, I guess, which is something they don't want to bounce. We're going to go get an Avalanche Rider off this and attack with it. Blow up the Castle of Antris. Attack there. Uh, I can't have the Teferi! Ultimate! We're fucked! I should concede. I need to concede. Is this game two or three? This game has taxed me so hard that I'm not even sure what game it is. Let's find out. Oh, fuck. I've got another game to go. End me. I brought the second e back in and cut the Avalanche Riders. So I thought it might be against Colonnade and stuff, but it turns out they're not really on that sort of thing. Uh, we're going to keep this because we can go like body into body into Magus and stuff. I think I just start playing out creatures though. This is lo I'm losing some of the efficiency. I'm losing some of the value that Burning Tree gives us. But honestly, how we win is just to pressure them. No basic here, which is good. Now, if I play the Magus them in, they will just counter it. So I'm gonna go to combat and attack. I think slamming just Magus is incorrect. What we can try and do is next turn cast a uh, collected company, and they'll try and counter that, and then we can untap and Magus them. This is just a three one that's gonna ping them for two. It's not exciting. Um, it's reasonable. Oh, I'm just gonna kill the that, but sure. It's going to have three that pings them for one then. Uh, I'm only casting it because I need to still apply pressure when I'm not casting my Magus. Of course, I'll this back later. It means they can't just resolve a Teferi as well and take it up. A three mana baby Teferi, a thin Teferi, a lean Teferi. Pyre of Heroes, sure. Pay to live, yep. Let's go to combat attack. This is three damage, it takes them to ten. Maybe they have snappy push. They of course have Snappy. The amount of Snappies I've played against today in modern, Jesus. Is it back in vogue? Snappy into Opt. Yeah. The part of me wonders if I should like stick a Coco here. Yeah, let's do it. And then they can tap they can tap out for Jace and then we can get him. Um Well they can't tap out for Jace if we have a Magus of the Moon. Interesting. We get mana off the Priest of Erobras, but it doesn't do anything here. We can go Priest plus Daredevil, make the mana push the Snapcaster seems bad. I'm gonna get Magus and Tyler's Tracker. Those seem pretty good. Sticking the Coco was pretty strong. Now, if they go Basic Island Jace, bounce the Magus? Nope. They could also have Aether Gust, as we've seen. We know they've, they're playing it. They went to like Esper Charmers, I think. Aether Gust. Put that on top. And they crack a fetch and kill our Tracker before we play a land. That is reasonable. And then I'm gonna play a Magus. Mm, do they have a. Do we think they have a second copy of push? They've played two pushes already. I don't think they will. They didn't. Okay, we're back on the Magus plan. Go attacking. I've messed up here. I should have put a Magus before combat because if they snappy here, they can kill the Magus. So I won't attack. And I'll just play another Magus. Next time we play Mayor of Everbrook and we can attack into a potential Snapcaster without feeling bad. Although they can snappy push, couldn't they? They can snappy push on Mayor Brook. Oh, that's fine, I think. Mayor. We go to combat attack for six. Snappy plus push kills it. Oh! Oh! We fucking got him! Looks like Magus to the Moon's back on the menu, boy! <laughs> yeah, this seems pretty hot. Let's fucking go. We're up against Frank Bonaparte. I wonder if they're related to Napoleon. If their full name is actually Frank Bonaparte. They've probably had that comment all their life. I'm sorry, I have the same thing. People ask me if I'm related to Chandler Bing. I'm like, no, that was his first name, you fucking idiot. I was never a really big fan of Friends. Like, it's okay. 
like a lot of people, it was kind of the in thing to like when I was at school. Remember, I'm only 21. I've never really watched Seinfeld either. Never really gotten into it. I know that Seinfeld was meant to be a bit more like a grown up version of Friends where, well, there's a lot of more pessimism and negativity. I think all the characters are meant to be assholes, I think, which is a thing in comedy that I quite like. Like I do in, like Always Sunny in Philadelphia was one of my favorite shows because, well, not because they're all rancid. I mean, in, in, that's just part of it, right? I really hope they don't blood moon me here. Hmm. Should have probably got a basic with this. Yeah, they're gonna blood moon me, aren't they? I'm gonna have to pyre myself out of this hole. Yeah. Yeah, should have known. That 70s show was also like really popular um, with like the cool kids. I was just like, this is okay. I don't think it's that funny. But I mean, I also, I, I have lived through the heyday of The Simpsons and South Park too, so. Pillage my fucking pyre. Wow, that is rude. In comes the Arbor Elf, like Ashton Kutcher in the 70s show. I was trying to think of who was in it, and that was the first thing that came to me. Okay, well we aren't casting these spells, which is fine. We got a werewolf in play. The werewolf will flip. Has there ever been any TV shows about werewolves? Was there a teen wolf? It was like Sabrina, but they were a wolf as well. Is that a thing? Oh god, my opponent's on five mana. I'm just gonna get, get, we're gonna get our glory brung, right? We're gonna get brung right to the glory hole and as we peep inside, a cock pokes us in the eye. Okay, that's not quite a glory bringer. That's just another Ashton Kutcher. Okay. Okay, destroy target land. Doesn't really affect us here. We don't really care. We're in good shape if we draw a pyre or, or a forest, even. Um, oh, they cast two spells, so we should care. Fuckity fuck, 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 fuck. We flip our Mayor of Hammerbrook again into a 3 3. We couldn't have attacked because they would have blocked with their Ashton Kutcher. No attacks from our opponent. We untap and draw another Mayor of Hammerbrook. We're going to attack here. They take three, going to 12. We make a 2 2 wolf at the end. I'm going to dub this wolf Monica from Seinfeld. They play another land, which is good. If they keep playing lands, it means they're not drawing gas. Okay. Prismatic Vista. We're just going to attack again. Maybe Howl Pack Alpha is the way to beat Blood Moon. Just. Or just werewolves in general. Just don't play spells, let them flip over and just do their thing, right? Isn't that a weird mechanic? I never really liked that. I liked that those two ways that were like night and day to flip your werewolves. I get that. But what I don't like is incentivizing people not to cast spells. I think that's kind of stupid. Now this isn't a human, so playing Thalys Intent doesn't do anything. And by that I mean it makes a 1-1. One, one. Uh, we'll attack with 3-3-3s, three, three, three. taking them to 3. I'm going to play a Thalys Lieutenant so we have more chance of having bodies that can swing through if they play an Inferno Titan and kill a load of our stuff. This is a, uh, a Thalys Lieutenant amongst the wolves. A fox amongst the pigeons. A Chandler Bing amongst the- I'm gonna cut my Magus because I don't know if Blood Mooning the Blood Moon deck is how you win a game of magic. They're gonna continue to try and Blood Moon us and we should be relatively resistant to it if we just think about it for more than five seconds. Oh, this hand, it's just so Joey. It's actually a turn two Burning Tree, Burning Tree, Mayor of Averbrook. Quite explosive. Is that a Joey? Is Joey the cringiest of the old friends people now when you watch the show? I haven't watched the show in fucking years. My sister loved it. She wants to give me an entire season of it on VHS and I watched it all on. I was like, okay, this is fine. Like, it's no red dwarf, is it? Our Vista's gonna go get us a forest, and that way we have perfect mana through a blood moon. It also means they untap and try to pillage us, which is a very Phoebe move, if you ask me. Um, which they can't do that in double red. Uh, we can just crack our fetch and not get not get Phoebe'd. They attack for one. We play Burning Tree Emissary into Burning Tree Emissary into Mayor of Averbrook, which honestly feels pretty good. I'm into it. They have a bolt for the mayor. That's fine. Utopia spore in their forest. That's a juicy avalanche rider target if ever I've seen one. They're gonna they're gonna stone rain me. I'm okay with that. That's fine. I'm gonna play a pyre. We're gonna get in for four. They attack for one, and they cast the ultimate <laughs> the ultimate. Uh, what's another character in the show? Ross moment here. Anger of the gods. Okay, fuck. We'll just lose all our bodies. That's fine. Player planes. Make a yes. Well, do you know what? I'm gonna make a malcontent so I can get it into Avalanche Riders next turn, and then your server will actually help us like clean up the game. So malcontents ping them for one. Ensnaring bridge. Okay. Okay. They don't have enough cards in their hand for us to attack. That's fine. I'm gonna sacrifice the Kessie malcontents and go grab ourselves a Avalanche Riders, and they're gonna just destroy that forest. Take them off two mana. Back to two. I'm not going to play our land because I'm going to Urobrask into a Tireless Tracker next turn. 
Nothing from them. Two cards in hand for them then. Are we playing Echo? No, we're not. We can turn a Witness that back later. Oh, we couldn't turn Urbrass into a Tireless Tracker, but we can turn a Burning Tree into a Tireless Tracker. So that's nice. They're gonna, oh, they're gonna bolt it before I get to use it. Oh, grim. Okay, you make two, two mana. Make a Priest of Urabrask. Make three mana. Sacrifice the Priest of Urabrask. And we're gonna go and get a P and Kirin and a No, we're gonna Hump Master the Fells here. If they don't find a land, we're gonna attack with everything. And we're gonna flip our Hump Master. Well, our Hump Master will flip and not be playable, unfortunately. Utopia Spore from our opponent. So they have one card in hand. P and Kirin and Alar would have given us bodies to attack with. Uh, Noble Hierarch's pretty good at just attacking through anything anyway. Um, let's go with Noble Hierarch. Then let's go with Pod the Hierarch into a Manic Master Vandal. Yeah, let's get that. Should we go target the Ensnaring Bridge? Say yes. We need to exile the Noble Hierarch from our bin. That was a good line. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it far more than I would an episode of Friends. They pillage our Pyre, which is fair. We undrop and we draw company. So we get to attack here, flip our Hunter and cast company in their turn. Taking them to six. What could we hit that's important here or relevant? Not a lot, honestly. Pump Master of the Fells flips. Honestly, doing it now and then them casting like a, a Wrath effect to kill all our stuff, like Arrow of Devastation or some shit, that'd be pretty brutal. So we shouldn't do it. I mean, no one's playing anything beyond anger, I think. But we shouldn't just fire off our spells into it. Fucking hell, looks like Ponza is no match for the power of friendship and cynical 90s comedy in the form of Seinfeld. <laughs> Noble Hierarch into Pyro of Heroes. Yep, 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 yep. To the Pyro of Heroes isn't actually that bad. It feels quite strong, actually. Uh, we will be locking ourselves out of White Man if the Noble Hierarch were to die and we cast Omega with his hand, but I don't give a fuck. Forest into Noble. We're overgrown two from our opponent. Are they going to thought seize us and take our Megas here? No, they're just going to push our Noble Hierarch. Okay, that's fine. Play Burning Tree. Play a Pyro of Heroes off of the Burning Tree mana. Now, they appear to be Jun, which makes our Megas significantly worse. If they've got a lot of red removal. We're going to see a Ren and Six perhaps. Just a straight up Tarmogoyf here. Okay. We're going to cast in Magus the moon that cannot be counted. And hopefully turning off overgrown tombs, fetch lands and other lands will make their life harder. Now if they bolt the Magus, we can always pyre our burning tree into another. Ideally I want to pop my burning tree into like a tra tireless tracker. Play a land and grow said tireless tracker this next turn. But it depends upon what they play here. They just bolt the Magus. Unlocking their hand. Inquisition to take our Eternal Witness in our hand. Sure, 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 sure. Grows the Goyfi too to a 4-5. Play a basic forest so Magus is not our line anymore. I stupidly just brain fired and fucking played the land before I got the tracker. That was stupid. Um, I'm going to get your server Dragon Claw then. Just do this instead. That was real dumb. It does mean that we can like steal their Tarmogoy from their turn and hit them back with it. So it's a lot of damage we're threatening next turn. God, that was fucking stupid. What was wrong with me there? I just... just Stop thinking. Just didn't really think much of it. Oh, hang on. I can't use your server dragon for this turn because I don't have double red. Ah, if we draw a mountain, we can steal it. They have the second bolt, which is unfortunate. They're going to attack us for four here. We're going to go to ten. We're going to pot our Thali to turn it into an eternal witness and play an eternal witness and get something else back. Just to flood our board out, I think. Wait a minute. If we get eternal witness for eternal witness, we can't get back the other eternal witness. Pod the lieutenant away, get an eternal witness, bring back the noble hierarch, play the noble hierarch. Just spinning my wheels all over the place here to try and get some bodies on the board. We can take one more hit from the goif and then we need to start like blocking and stuff. I guess we could have eternal witness the eternal witness back and blocked indefinitely. We go to six. Noble hierarch does make blue mana, which allows dragon pod to be activated for, as a heads up for. Later on, we're going to be discarding our Tireless Tracker here, unfortunately. We're going to we draw Thalia's Lieutenant, so we're going to pod our Eternal Witness into a Hunt Master of the Fells. And then we're going to Thalia's Lieutenant. And then we're just going to go attack him for two. Now, our opponent can't escape Croaks at the moment. They don't have enough cards in the bin. They need eight, I believe. No, it's just five. Shit to the bed. We'll probably throw the Wolf under the bus just to conserve some life here maybe they need double black maybe their hands just full of liliana's i'm not sure we'll block with wolf second time wolf ain't so bad drawing coco would be nuts for us but we didn't um we can pod the thalia into a tracker and draw some cards we can pod the noble high rock into a thalia's lieutenant and grow our thalia's lieutenant and our hunt of the fells got a lot of chumping to be doing next turn i think i'll pod the thalia's lieutenant away grab ourselves a tracker play a foothills 
track a clue, grow the tracker, draw a forest. We're playing it pretty fine. We're, we're, we're going to be dead to a lightning bolt if we don't block both. Um, oh, we didn't... Yeah, of course. We have to flip our Ravager, which is nice. We kill a Tarmo. We get a 5-5. Five, five. I forgot that we didn't cast a spell. I thought I cast a tracker, but of course we put it into it. So now actually Ravager can block a 4-5 and tracker could trade with a 4-5. Now, I kind of want my Ravager to flip back into a Hunt Master, gain some life, make a body. But that would involve them casting two spells. And them casting two spells would be terrible for us. Removal would be awful. And bodies would be pretty bad too. I'd rather they just didn't do anything. But I mean, hoping your opponent doesn't do anything isn't really a valid game plan. Honestly. They attack. I'm assuming they're going to have more damage somewhere. So we're going to go Ravager into the 4-5. That is a 5-5. Five, five. And if we have Bolt, we die. If we block with Tracker, we're not exactly winning. I'm going to block with Tracker. Trading off the bodies is quite important here. I assume they got another Bolt. Okay, no. That's fine. They now have a push for our Ravager, which is also... It's fine. It's not ideal, but it's fine. We're going to pay one life to crack this clue. Company is strong. Okay, we're going to company now. We get a mayor and a priest. A mayor and a priest. Sounds like I play like happy family or something. Uh, we've got three red mana coming off the Urobrask. We use two of that mana to crack our Urobrask. Grabbing a Peer and Kirin Nalar. The value is insane here. And then I guess just slap them for whatever this is. This is three? A counter from the thingy earlier. One from the Exalted, one from the mayor. Three damage. I'm into it. We're now presenting lethal. They're getting to four mana here. This could be their own Huntmaster, Living Bowdown, or any other classic Jund 4 drop. Or could it be a VBE? Bloodbraid Elf. It cascades into an Inquisition of Kozilek. Which is not good here. As we have nothing in hand that they care about. I guess they should attack with the Bloodbraid Elf regardless. And then we just chump with a Thopter. Nope. We got there. Um, <laughs> Value. Just a circus. Like an absolute fucking clown fiesta of value here. I'm actually going to cut my Magus to the Moon because... Whilst I think it's good in the olden days against like traditional modern Jund, I don't know how good it is against the ones trying to cast Kroxa, for example. That said, keeping off double black would be pretty good. I doubt they've got two swamps in their deck. Maybe I should be playing the Magus. I'll bring it back in on the play if we lose this match. This hand has double pyre, one body. We're going to mulligan this. This is not good. This hand is also not good because our mana can be a little bit shaky, it looks like. And then we're going to end up with a five. Yeah. Pierre and Kieran are back into the deck to want to pot into it. I guess we can lose a land. <laughs> okay, let's go with this. Oh, don't do this to me. No, not like... Ah, fuck. Okay, so this is bad. The old mulligan to five and get hand attacked by Thoughtseize or Inquisition of Kozilek is brutal. They take the dork, which makes a lot of sense. Uh, it slows us down considerably. We drew a Mayor of Arabrook, which isn't that exciting. We're going to pass turn back to them after playing a Foothills. One Tarmogoyf as ordered. Okay, okay. I just played the wrong creature. I meant to play this one. I think I clicked the wrong one. That was wrong. That was very, very wrong. Yeah, I'm all over the place today. I am all out of sorts and I'm making fucking shit decisions with regards to magic. If they miss a land drop, that'd be nice, considering we've got kind of fuck on the Mortal Fire with the hand attack. They get in for three... Uh, we can grow us to a 3-3 three, three next turn. I think I want to put the count on my Maya more. No, they play the third land. Bad times. Looks like I probably should be bringing back in Megas the Moon. There is Renin 6 to kill off Ali's Lieutenant, I assume. Yeah. That would have happened either way, no matter what we played. We're going to play a Pyre of Heroes now. Well, we're going to play a Burning Tree Emissary into a Pyre. No, we're not. Fetching that planes for that Thalos Lieutenant was just not good. Okay, we'll draw a red source into the burning tree, I am sure. I am sure we can draw another red or green source. Some of these lands are fucking expensive. You'd hope they'd do the good shit. Is this Liliana? Yeah, okay. I think we're on the run, hit run of run of land into like multiple cocoa plan i think that's that's our plan here if i don't hit a land next turn i might just scoop it up we need to hit a land here nope okay i'm gonna scoop it up john did the john thing when we multiply okay we'd love to play first here we go let's keep this turn two noble hierarch if they don't kill the magus i mean it's it's let's be real it's unlikely they're either gonna kill the kill the hierarch or they're gonna did i say turn two hierarch if they don't kill the magus i'm a fucking mess they're even gonna kill the hierarch on turn one or they're gonna thought seize the magus out of our hand Play a noble hierarch and let's pass the turn. They shock themselves. Surprise, surprise, what's it gonna be? Bolt on the hierarch. Okay, so they bolt the hierarch now. Inquisition on the next turn, I guess. 
We drew Burning Tree, which is good, because we can apply some pressure. Here we go, Burning Tree into Burning Tree. I'm gonna go and grab a, I guess a mountain here, to make it look like we might not be about to Blood Moon ourselves. Let's go Burning Tree into Burning Tree. So one Burning Tree shits out the other one, like some sort of Burning Tree centipede. Inquisition. So they can take our Makers here, and then we can E-Win it back to hand. They might go Inquisition, play a land, and then Inquisition or Thoughtseize to take the other part as well. That would be the the worst thing for us. If they haven't got another hand attack spell, we've still got a Megas on track for turn four. We're going to E-Win the Megas back to hand. They play their second Verdant untapped. This allows them to then crack them for uh, basic lands to get around the Megas, the moon. We're going to go Foothills. We're going to go Attacking. They're going to have removal for the Magus, so I'm just going to slam a Huntmaster and just force them to try and get back into the game, and then we can make it to them once they're uh, trying to deal with the other pressure. We're playing two sub-games, essentially. They have one single copy of Fail Push here for the Emissary. That is fine. We get in for four and take them to nine. They decay an Emissary, so they're only going to a nine here. I think slamming Huntmaster is way better than slamming Moody Man, because this is better against Liliana if they play Liliana. Obviously, this would stop them playing Liliana if they've got another Swamp in hand. This also is good against most removal spells here too. I guess they could crack a fetch and play a, uh, a fatal push on the Huntmaster. They could have a bolt with the Huntmaster. There's a lot of things they could have. It's a Colligan's Command, which honestly is quite literally the best thing they could have, right? Because if we had gone Magus instead of Huntmaster, they could have still done this. So they still get like a, a two, it's not a clean two for one because we still got a wolf out of the Huntmaster, but that's still frustrating. We're still in a good spot. We're on 19, they're on nine. They have one card in hand. We have no cards in hand. We have got raw top decks. They got Bloodblade Elf, which is a pretty strong top deck, as is Croak, certainly, I guess, as well. But we can get Collected Company, and also a pod would allow us to turn into a Western Pier, Kieran, and Alar, which is good against Jun, because Jun doesn't like cards that force you to spend more than one card to deal with them. Jund is all about taking your top decks, then playing potent threats. Bloodbird Elf is one of the few ways to get a two for one. Same with Lidiana and K Command, I guess. Bloodbird Elf hits a fatal push. They're gonna kill our Ewit here so that we don't have a live out off of pod. Now they killed the wolf, which is I think categorically incorrect, but there you go. We drew another land, which is fine. We are flooding a little bit, but that'll be great when we draw our pod or our company. We can't attack into the Bloodbird Elf, they'll just trade them off. Uh, that's not good, because the Eternal Wits on board is good for our pod. They play a Ren and Six, which will just kill our Ewit. That's why they pushed the Wolf, because they had an in our hand answer to the Eternal Witness. Okay, we drew the bad parts of our deck now. we got we're a random Burning Tree, so it doesn't do anything. Treetop Village from our opponent gives them another attacker and blocker next turn. We drew a Malcontent, which will do two damage to their face. It's an X1 as well, so it dies to Ren and Six. I think we have to ping Ren and Six for two here. There's an argument that you want to keep it in hand and play it later to surprise them when we have four bodies. Now, sure, but if they just draw an Inquisition and we have a card in hand, it makes the Inquisition live. We've pinged the Ren and Six down to one. If they want to kill the Kessie Malcontent, they're going to minus one it. They're going to have a 3-3 three, three block entry to Village next turn as well. I could have attacked there and forced them to block with the Bloodbird Elf, but honestly... Having them on board is better. The other option, I guess, was to attack with the Burning Tree Emissary and then ping them off with the Kessig Warrior Contender. For some reason, they didn't block. Season Pyro. Okay. Discard one card, draw two. They discarded Thought Season made an Elemental. They cracked their Verdant going to three. Fuck, maybe I should have kept Kessig Warrior Contender in hand for this reason. Plague Engineer on a human. Okay. Sometimes you flood. Sometimes you flood and your opponent has Colligan's Command into Red and Six. Blood Braid into Red and Six into Plague Engineer. Sometimes that's... I mean, flooding is one thing, but your opponent having, like, a hot fucking... hot fucking jam all over their toast is frustrating. Those bolts in our sideboard are looking pretty tasty right now. We drew an Eternal Witness. Gets us a Hunt Master, which makes us a ton of bodies. Actually, it just kills them with the Malcontent. Wow. Okay. <laughs> what a hot draw. Oh, no, it doesn't kill them with the Malcontent because the Plague Engineer, Vince... I should have got the Huntmaster back. That was dumb. That was very, very dumb. Uh, fuck sticks. No one told you that was gonna be this way. Okay. We've got a Noble. We can't lose. Oh, fuck. Is this the mirror? I hope this isn't the mirror. It's embarrassing when you lose the mirror. Well, let's play a Noble and have it bolted, probably. It's safe to say this ain't no fucking mirror. <laughs> Is this gonna be Storm or some shit? Storm, so glad we got our Thalias in the sideboard. We grow our team, and by team I'm wearing a single individual, but every workplace calls that group a team now, right? So here you go, self-employed noble hierarchy is a team. 
Attacks with an exalted trigger. Are we going to see a bolt or something here? Oh, this is going to be an upgrade. Electro dominance. Oh, is this going to be living end? Is this electro dominance living end? Oh, fuck. Okay. Just making some casual 4 fours over there. That's not particularly fair. And I was not expecting it in the fucking slightest. Okay, we're in danger. We are in literal fucking danger. If Ace Ventura taught you that rhinos are a, a pleasant thing to fall out of the arse of, well, let me tell you this, that's Hollywood, kids. The arsehole of a rhino should be avoided at all costs. A uh, little side note there, anyone in the comment section who wants to explain to me that he was actually like a mechanical fake rhino, you don't have to tell me that. I knew that already. This is eight hole damage. That's a lot. Okay, take it. Sure, go to 12. Fucking see if I care. Canvas holes human. Uh, tireless tracker. <laughs> Won't be throwing my hierarchy into their open manor again next time, that's for sure. Making eight power and toughness for two mana is pretty absurd, right? Fucking ace and fucking Shura. Fucking fuck Jim Carrey. That's controversial, right? People like people absolutely ejaculate all over Jim Carrey, right? I don't have a problem explicitly with Jim Carrey. I know he was um, married to, or still is married to, um, the anti-vax ladies. That's a problem. And the first Ace Ventura is uh, not aged well, shall we say, because it's explicitly uh, transphobic. So fuck that shit. But yeah, I, I mean, I don't. I don't hate Jim Carrey. I mean, he was a, a bad Riddler. But you can call me the Riddler. Magus the Moon don't seem so hot here. Taking damage from these foothills and these Prismatic Vistas is actually probably quite bad for us here. Let's go Prismatic Vista. Grabbing a green source. I'm quite a fan of Liar Liar. Haven't seen that in a while. I say I'm a fan of it. It's probably going to be like, turn out that it's just full of homophobic slurs and I can't even remember. Do you know that? That's the problem with the 90s, right? You have this fond memory of something because you weren't really aware of these issues and then you go back and watch it and you're like oh that's not good our opponent has two fucking rhinos it's eight power and toughness we have to do some pretty heavy double blocking to kill him which is sad because i don't really want to lose my entire board i might double block down one and go down to one is that stupid that's kind of stupid right this is a burn spell it is a burn spell let's go to blocks block like this i'm gonna take four they suspend a greater garden on we untap huntmaster does flip two to them draw pia and kirin nalar play a foothills which i won't be cracking anytime soon do i turn off that blue and green mana do i just play a pia and kirin i can't play two spells i can crack a clue here and play one spell that would involve cracking my fetch and that would kill me let's not do that what if they have another crashing rhinos and if they have electron dominance in hand we're just dead anyway let's get in for three Okay, pass back to our opponent. Ancestral Visions on Suspend. We have a lot of damage on board. We untap into Athalia's Lieutenant. We're gonna go white and red then to play Athalia's Lieutenant. Actually cancel. Do we do that? It does grow three of our team members. Or two of our team members. We're gonna go to combat and attack. I think they, they're dead here if they don't have a spell of some kind of description. Because they block our biggest thing, which is ineffectively the Tireless Tracker. And then they take 10, 8, 9, 10. They take exactly 10. Okay. <laughs> what the fuck? Take that, Jim Carrey. You shit. Noble, noble, Yasova tracker. Yeah, this seems all right. We've got a fetch land for the tracker as well to generate us some card advantage. I love me a tireless tracker. Steam vents from our opponent. They're going to just suspend the visions, I think. Perhaps. Maybe. No, suspend a gargadon. Okay. Cavern on human. Green mana noble. Braid on noble. Sure. As foretold, which we, we want to blow that up with our mask to vigilante or whatever the hell it's called. Eternal witness drawn for the turn. We're going to play a tireless tracker. They didn't cast anything off as foretold last turn, so I'm assuming the hand hasn't got much as foretold stuff in it. Pyroclasm. Fine. 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 Oh, I should have cracked the. Fucking Vista in response. Bollocks, tit, wank, fuck. That was a, a blunder and a half. So I would have had another clue. A card in the bank for later down the line, essentially. I am a moron. Getting a forest. Let's go green, green, green. Let's play your Sova Dragon Floor here. This means if they gargled on us, we can, like, steal the gargled on and on them back. Uh, I didn't play a land. I went to play this Horizon Canopy. That was bad. Oh my god, I'm so distracted today. Magic is hard. There's a lot of moving parts, right? You got an Electro Dom, my Asova, and make some 4 fours. Pretty good. Pretty good, actually. That might actually seal up this game a little bit. Um, There's a Gargoron on the horizon, isn't there? 
didn't play a land last turn either because I'm a moron. Um, let's go ahead and get a Noble Hierarch back so we can do something with our mana this turn. Ugh, if they make a land up this turn, they can just make the Gargodon. And by the way, it has fucking haste when it comes off Suspend. Second copy of Asphatol. Another copy of Crashing Rhinos. <laughs> oh shit, son. That's a lot of Rhinos. That's a lot of fucking Rhinos. What can we possibly draw here that does anything? I fumbled this game pretty hard. Um, we drew a Noble Hierarch. That doesn't do anything. Let's go Horizon Canopy. Crap the Canopy. Drawing, not a collected company. Okay, we're on the play. We have a Thalia, which is pretty good against them. Our opponent's called Number One Pawner, or Owner, in Leet Speak. What year is it? <laughs> Let's play a Thalia. She can't die to bowl here because they would have to spend two mana to do so. Uh, if they want our braid next turn, they can't because it costs them three mana. So this is a good way of hindering our opponents progression if you're new to the channel if it's the first video of modern you've spent with me well th this is thalia i've played a lot of thalia in my lifetime it's, it's, it's funny that it's the fifth game of the league that we got around to actually slamming her into play the electro dominance now costs three to cast for zero and the spell they try to cast off it will cost one as well so on and so on so they're gonna try and kill her 100 gonna try and kill her Player Tracker. They did have the Lightning Bolt, the two mana Lightning Bolt. Okay, they would do that in combat anyway, I assume. Um, yeah, so they're playing a Braves last game. They're also playing Bolt alongside the Braves, which is interesting. I'm just gonna see an Asmith Hall get slammed now. Obviously, we can E Wit Thalia back. We can jump Noble Hyrax into Thalia's as well with our. Okay, we're gonna lose the Tracker too. Good job, we've got a second Tracker. Play Tracker number two, Player Fetchland. They're gonna Electro Dom Me Daddy. Uh, this is gonna be some card draw, just two fucking. It's some card draw. Serum Visions from our opponents. Actual Serum Visions too, not a Seaman Visions, as the newer art more looks like. This is more inside a Serum. Is she underwater? Is she not? Is she in a vat of cum? Or is she not? Who, who knows? As they say, it's always better to uh, sink in the cum than come in the sink. Wait. A Braid or a Tracker? Sure. So they've got two cards in the bank from the Tracker. They've got five cards in hand. They've got all the mana in the world. We're not threatening them. So, not feeling great at this point in time. Play a Mayor of Averbrook. As foretold, as it was foretold, there is the foretold. Do they get any Rhinos or card draw out of it this turn? They get some card draw out of it. Fuck me. This isn't going too well for us. If they kill this Mayor, it's going to be a bit of a joke. Okay. Mayor is dead. Yeah, we're, we're, we're in there. Firmly in the... You can be in the driver's seat. Or we can be in the getting absolutely fucking ruined seat. We're in that one. This ain't too bad though. I probably want to flood the board, right? So I want to go like this. Play this. Hoping I'll be able to get this Thalia into play off an Eternal Witness. Make a green. Cast this. So we hit Thalia. And we hit Thalia's Lieutenant. Which is pretty good. Now, Pyroclasm is still a problem. Grow the team. Make the team grow. Draw a card. Drew another land. Okay, we have a board. We have a board. Company is really good. I don't know if anyone has ever spoken to you directly about this, but Collected Company is really good. They put a counter on Asphaltol that they can now cast one zero or X CM or zero or one CMC spell each turn for free. That spell will actually still cost them one mana though because of Thalia. Still one mana to make two eight eights. It's pretty good if they have crashing footfalls in hand. They crack the strand. They grab an island. Let's see here, just Angle of the Gods or something. Pyroclasm for three. Angle for four. Okay, this is a lot of mana. We're gonna Electro Dom Thalia for two. Which I think allows them to cast the spell itself for free. Because Thalia will be dead. Oh no, looks like they had two to put on the stack. So they tap down. They've drawn a lot of cards. They still want a free spell foretold. They found a crashing footfalls. Okay. Back and forth, back and forth. Interesting game. Interesting game. We're gonna draw Pierre and Kirin Nalar. We're gonna play the canopy and we're gonna crack it first. Drew an Eternal Witness, which can get back Collected Company and we can cast it next turn. So we're going to do that next turn. Grow Thalia's Lieutenant, make some bodies. No attack arenos because we'll get block areno. And um, yeah, much like... I'm really straining to think of Jim Carrey shit. Much like Jim Carrey in the film Eternal Sunshine of a Spotless Mind, this Thalia Lieutenant wouldn't be very happy. Anger of the Gods! Anger of the Gods! Okay, there it is. That's fucking rough. Okay, we've still got Eternal Witness into Collected Company, which is actually pretty damn good. But we're gonna take eight here. Go to nine. They draw three cards. Jesus. 
we need to interact with this and we just don't have anything i think this deck probably needs more artifact enchantment hate in the sideboard whether that be straight up like destructive revelry or whether that be multiple copies of i don't know uh the masked changeling thing from the new calderheim uh variant of vex aid two mana we played earlier or maybe even just the the manic vandal um the three mana Vi Vi viridian vandals three mana blow up thing maybe patrick will put it up on screen now i don't know if that's what it does i think it brought up, definitely brought up artifacts i don't know if it brought up enchantments i could look but i'm not going to right now for now they have promised to cast footfalls and bolt to put more bodies in play let's make hope this company does things that i don't think company can physically do but you never know with the collected company that's the beauty of collected company we're on six what do we draw Noble Hierarch, that's not what we wanted to see. Fuck you, Noble Hierarch. Only kidding. Welcome to the party. Love you, really. Let's get a forest. Let's go Eternal Witness of the Spotless Mind, Jim Carrey. And then we're going to go get Collected Company. And then we're going to just fucking pray this somehow digs us out of this hole. We're, we're facing off against a lot here. I don't think there's anything we could hit here that does this. Double Thalia's Lieutenant. Thalia's Lieutenant plus Mayor of Averbrook. Like, what does that even do? The team Groweth. She groweth. That gives us uh, six, seven, eight power blocking, and they got uh, and the whole two lots of eight, sixteen. G G. If I had played a bit better, a bit tighter, if I'd been so distracted and just a bit weird today, feeling a bit odd, maybe a bit under the weather, shall we say? If I wasn't so distracted, I think we could have easily three two with that. And with some reform of the deck, I think the deck actually had legs. I think Pyre plus Company and like value creatures is always going to be good. And the two creature types that, that really suits is humans and elementals, I think. Spirits may be, but spirits don't really bring in the value that both elementals and humans can. I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you enjoyed it as well, Staxi Boy. Uh, if you enjoyed this a lot and you want a chance to get one of your decks into one of these videos, links to Patreon are down in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe and smash that fucking bell if you want some notifications on my sweet, sultry tones. And don't forget, comment down below. Let me know down below who your favourite human is. It can be your mum. It can be me. It could be Napoleon Bonaparte. It shouldn't be, because by all accounts he was a bit of a cunt but it could be napoleon bonaparte let me know in the comment section below who your favorite human is because that drives engagement and ta-ta for now